I hope to share some of the magic I've learned in India with you now. And uh, we all know that in, and most of you all know, that in August there's going to be a big eclipse coming. And uh, that big eclipse is, it, it is a big deal. Now sometimes you see on Facebook, people are all going to get enlightened, that's kind of crazy. Or the whole world's going to end, that's more crazy. Uh, you see all kinds of really exaggerated in, in random direction stuff. And uh, one of the things that I'm famous for is being very logical. <coughs> you know, with sometimes people think that astrology is this airy-fairy uh, subject, but, but it's not. There's, there's, there's what happens in the sky, there's what's the energy of what's happening in the sky, and then there's what it means to us and, and how that reflects. And we all know that there's bad days and good days. So, so there is a qualitative difference in different days, in different spaces of time. And eclipses have a very, very powerful difference of energy. And we're going to look at what that means. So the title of this lecture, let's see, a little bit more about myself before I begin. Um, so I'm a professional Vedic astrologer for the last 16 years. And uh, I write lots of articles, I lecture at universities. Um, I had to work really hard to kind of like get rid of some of the more technical stuff. Uh, my last lecture was at the University of Wales on how Hindus determine religious rituals according to celestial phenomena. So um, uh, today it's going to be, uh, I'm calling it being on the right side of an eclipse, utilizing the power of shadow. Because eclipses are, are when the shadow takes the luminary. And there's a qualitative difference of the time before an eclipse, the time during an eclipse, and the time after an eclipse. And what do we do in, in those different periods of energy? And when we understand what to do in, the, in those times, we can utilize that to, to make our meditations tenfold, a hundredfold, to make things manifest in our life in, in whole new levels. And if we don't utilize that energy, we can send ourselves into years of bad luck and problems. So, uh, and this upcoming August eclipse, it's a very powerful eclipse for the United States. Yes. So, let's see here. So, our journey, our, our time together, we're going to start with understanding the lunar cycles. What makes a, a full and, and new moon? And that's an important thing to understand with eclipses and the energies of them. Then we're going to understand lunar nodes, or what's called the cycle of the dragon. Uh, then, with understanding those two components, we have the main thing that makes an eclipse happen. Uh, then we're going to look at the, there's four types of eclipses based on those four things. New moon, full moon, and, and, and the nodes. And we're going to uh, look at the materialistic for spiritual components. Because some eclipses are very spiritual. Some eclipses are very materialistic. Some will send you on a bad trip. Some can make you a millionaire. So we're going to look at what the difference is between those eclipses. And um, the state of consciousness that an eclipse makes, it, it creates something, that, uh, a state of consciousness. And when we understand that state of consciousness, that allows us to understand what, how can we utilize this eclipse? What, what is the state that our mind enters, and how can we harness that? And after we understand that, we'll talk about what to do during the, an eclipse, uh, before and after. And if we have time, we'll talk about the upcoming eclipse. And if we don't have time, then that'll be part of my lecture tomorrow. And I'll just go through real quick to show you those slides. Um, so, uh, the new moons, the, the full and new moon. Uh, and can everybody see this slightly? Because there's the, the images in it. Are, move, there's plenty of room up here. So move up because there's there's technical data in, in, in these these. I thought I was gonna have a big uh, you know projection. So um, so if we see up here, there's the sun, and right here's the earth. Now uh, a new moon is when in that cycle of the earth going around the sun, the moon is in between the earth and the sun. So the side of the moon that we don't see is fully bright and the side that we do see is dark. So we're seeing the dark side of the moon on a new moon. On a full moon, 
the moon is on the other side of the Earth, so that we're seeing completely the bright side. And if the moon is halfway between the front and back of the Earth, then it's a half moon. So that angle, and that's what this, this diagram is indicating, is based upon where the moon is moving around the Earth. And so we're just seeing this, this light side and, and the shape that that light side is creating. Uh, from the, the Vedic uh, realm, or the Hindu realm, the 48 hours, the 48 hours uh, before that, when you look at a calendar and it says new moon, and it gives you a time, 48 hours before that, for, for 24 hours, that's called, that's Shiva's time. That's the time period connected to Shiva. The moon is just a small crescent. You see it in, in Shiva's head. He's wearing the crescent just before it becomes new. The moon represents our thought processes, our mind, our thinking. And it, it going into new, it going into this, it's becoming, before it becomes new, it becomes completely dark. So that dark moon is, is the mind completely disappearing. And so the 48 hours that crescent starts, 24 hours before that point, that becomes Kali's moon. It's just a sliver, it's almost completely dark. And in that darkness, that's the dark mother. That's the space of non-duality where me and you, there's no difference. And you'll, non-duality is a big term these days in, in the spiritual realm and in the yoga realm. And, and I, I, I make fun of it because you and me were not the same. You look very different than me. Um, you know, like somebody that would want to date you wouldn't want to date me. It's, it's, we're different. But the new moon represents where our perception is, what is it that's the same? And so that new moon, the, the light disappears, the differences disappear. We enter a unity consciousness on that, that point of new moon. So those who are meditating, that new moon point, it's, it's, it's a time to disappear the mind, to let go of the mind, it's to be overcome the thought processes. Um, the conjunction, when, when it, that time you see on the counter, that's called the conjunction of the sun and the moon. And that conjunction is the merge, uh, is the mergence of Shiva and Shakti. It's where unity actually happens. And that unity is building up, building up to that point. As soon as it hits that point, it's done. So if you're going to do a new moon ritual, you want to do it after that point, because that's the point where the moon is actually new. Before that point, the moon is getting darker and darker and darker, and the energy is getting heavier and heavier. And so this is the dynamic of what's happening. Uh, new Moon is a time to tap into core consciousness, where all the thought processes go, I'm a man, I'm a woman, I'm white, I'm black, like none of that matters in, in the space of, of, of the New Moon. The Full Moon, being farthest away from the Sun, is that's connected to Vishnu and Lakshmi. So the New Moon is Shiva and Kali, the Full Moon is Vishnu and Lakshmi. And Lakshmi is the goddess of prosperity. Vishnu is upholding Dharma. It's being out in the world. It's, it's doing service to the world. It's making things happen. Very different than going in and doing meditations and tapping into yourself. It's time to get out and be out in the world. <coughs> so the, the dark moon becoming new is a time for either really private events or, or personal time. Full moon is a time of big social events and gatherings. All right, so the lunar motion. Um, so this is, this is one of my favorite diagrams here, and I worked a long time trying to get it to create this visual. Even though the moon is moving around the Earth, the Earth is moving. And so every time it's turning, it's turning at a different place, space, and time. So this line here is showing the movement that the moon is actually making as it goes around the sun. And we can see in this image that the new moon is on the sun side, the full moon is on the outside. Um, and this is a, it's an image to get the understanding. This is drawn to scale right here. Now, the most important thing to understand, and the reason I'm talking about new and full moon, an eclipse can only happen on a new moon or a full moon. So whenever you see that Facebook post that says, it's a full moon and an eclipse, or the eclipse is happening on the full moon, like it's some like special 
thing that is happening on the full moon, it can only happen on a full moon. So there's nothing special about an eclipse on a full moon. They only happen on full moons. Okay. Um, important thing that, and you'll see the Facebook post all the time dr dramatizing the two of those things happening together. Uh, again, this is just like re-stressing that new and full moon um, uh, of, of that full moon. You, you can see that the full moon is here, the earth is here, the sun is there. So the earth, uh, on a full moon, the earth is in between the sun and uh, the moon. And on a new moon, the moon is in between the earth and, and the sun. So because of that, new moons give us solar eclipses, full moons give us lunar eclipses. Simple celestial dynamics, right? It's no, and so as I, and this is, we need to understand the celestial dynamic, that way you can understand the deeper potency that's available, because we understood the new and the full moon, so that already gives us a slight idea of the difference between the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipse, it's external world, things happening outside, social events. Solar eclipse, they're internal things, from a personal perspective. Um, I'm going to be looking back and forth, so I'll do my best. So, the first thing we needed to understand was the full and new moon. Now, every full and new moon, there is an eclipse. So there's something that's creating that eclipse. And what that's called is, it's called the nodes of the moon. And uh, the nodes of the moon, the, 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 if we look at the full and new, and we see a, a, a longitudinal plane, it's, it's the moon's motion moving this way. So sun's here and it's moving in this direction. Now the nodes, the moon actually isn't moving in a flat saucer. It's moving at a slight five degree angle. So if this is the path of the sun, sometimes it's up, then it's down, then it's up, then it's down. So it's half the month north, of that path, half the month south of that path. And that moment that it, it switches from north to south and south to north, that's called the node. That's the part where it's crossing the, the, the Earth's path around the sun. So it's a, a crucial point. And that point is considered to be a shadow point because that's the point where an eclipse can happen. An eclipse can't happen any other place. So when there's a full or new moon near that point, that gives us an eclipse. Um, so, let's see. The, um, the point going north, where the moon goes above the path, that's called Rahu. In Sanskrit, or in the medieval times, they called it dragon's head. And that's why it's called the, the dragon cycle, the draconic cycle. And so dragon's head is it's a materialistic <coughs> point. It's about being in the world. In the biodynamic calendar, anybody grow vegetables with the biodynamic calendar? Not yet, I'm about to though. Oh, <laughs> that's this, why I'm here. This is a crucial point in the biodynamic calendar. Okay. When the moon becomes conjunct that point, yeah. it, it, it marks the day off, don't plant anything. Things that day don't do well, they don't grow. Um, because the moon has entered the shadow, it's, it's, it's moving through that shadow space. And that shadow space, when we look at it astrolog astrologically, that shows your shadow. That shows the things you don't look at, the things you don't want to deal with. In, in an astrological chart, if, that po if Venus is connected to that point, then a person has all kinds of sexual stuff in their shadow they're not dealing with. If Mercury's there, the person's got all kinds of financial shadow, stuff that they're not looking at. So, so it really shows what's our shadow, darker self. Um, the south node is where the moon goes below the, the solar path. And that becomes this uh, this this point of going deep uh, and from the biodynamic calendar when the moon is above the ecliptic we do plantings that are leaves uh, flowers and fruits when it's below we plant roots like beets and carrots and it's it's the thing going down in and from a spiritual perspective it's going into ourselves going deeper into to our our internal nature um, from the traditional Vedic perspective of spiritual, spiritual is not something up there that you're getting to. It's not this heaven. It's actually deeper inside. This, the spirituality, you're not leaving, going upwards, and it's not some other place. It's right here, right now, inside. 
And so that south node point is representing that, that direction of turning inwards. All right, so. And those of you guys who are over here, you might want to squeeze a little more over here because the, the, the images here are going to make a big difference. I thought we'd have a big projector, you know, but this is, this is what we got. So here, what I'm showing is, uh, this is either a new or full moon, and you can see that the last eclipse we had in February, it was just below the node. And then the next one we had above, the next full moon we had above, above, above. The uh, next eclipse is showing up right on the node. That's what's making it a total eclipse. The closer it is to that node, that means the more direct the shadow is. So from the Indian perspective, this point, it's a point that creates an eclipse, but it's actually, it's the shadow. It's where the shadow of the Earth is, 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 is pointing. It's where the shadow of the moon is existing. And so that shadow point is considered to always be existing. It's almost like if you looked at your shadow and considered it an actual entity. They considered that shadow in the sky an actual entity that they utilize in the charts. And in the Western charts, they call it the North and South Node. Um, now, this point, the moon becomes new and full every six months by this point. That means that there's an eclipse cycle every six months. And when an eclipse cycle happens, it means there's a full moon and a new moon by the node. So every six months, there's a full moon and a new moon. So how rare are eclipses? Every six months, we have a solar and a lunar eclipse. So they're not rare. The world's not ending. The government's not going to topple. They're, they're, not everybody's not getting enlightenment or aliens coming or any of these interpretations that will be showing up in your Facebook feed in the next six months. Um, they happen every six months, but they all have a different energy. So, um, so. Um, and this goes a little deeper into uh, Rahu and Ketu, the north and south node. Uh, so Rahu is, is it's this materialistic energy. It's coming into the world. Um, Rahu has the energy. I like to compare it to narcotics. It, Rahu rules narcotics, drugs that make people lose connection with themselves. And if you think about coming into the world, when you watch a movie, you disappear. Your mind disappears. There's something of you that disappears. If you watch TV all day or you just, you're continually externally focused, you disappear into what's happening. The south node is connected more to psychedelics. It's getting you sensitive. It's getting you more in touch, more so that you feel deeper. And just like psychedelics, you can sometimes have a bad trip and sometimes have the most incredible enlightenment experience of your life. The south node is that frequency of that sensitivity getting so deep it can take you either too far or just right to your core nature. So the alignment, and, and we have this little image down here which some of you probably can't see at all. If there's a full moon, new moon, and the node, it, it's not falling in, in the nodal zone, there's no shadow. That because the full, if, if this is the earth, and the moon is, is spinning, it can be up above where the sun is getting that shadow, or it can be below where the sun would give the shadow. It needs to be right in that Rahu K2 area. So there needs to be that alignment of the nodes and the new moon, full moon. Those four factors, four factors make an eclipse. And so we have four factors, and those four factors uh, give us four different energies of eclipses. We have lunar eclipses, either by Rahu or by Ketu, and solar eclipses, either by Rahu or by Ketu. So that's four different energies. Um, so those four energies, the full moon, lunar eclipse, full moon, what, what did we say it represented? Being in the world, not materialistic, it's being out in the world. It's just being out in the world, it's being social. Now you can be social for a spiritual purpose or you can be social for a very materialistic purpose. So there are eclipses that are full moon eclipses with Rahu. And so that's being 
out external in the world, but for a materialistic purpose. Now, when we have an eclipse like that, that's an eclipse where we want to do rituals to manifest our prosperity in the external world. If there's something that's not happening in the world that you want to make happen, that's a time where you can have the force to make that happen. The danger of those rituals at that time is they're very effective. And I don't know how many people have done rituals here and sometimes you get these, you, you pray for something and then it comes and you forgot to add a few clauses in there. So if, if you pray for a spouse during that time, the spouse will come. Doesn't mean they'll be a good spouse. If you didn't say good spouse, that spouse will come and you'll be with them for the rest of your life. The eclipses, they really, the rituals are extremely effective during those time periods. Now, a full moon, lunar eclipse, that's connected to the south node. That's manifesting in the world spiritual intentions. So if you have a ritual group, if you want to build a temple, if you want to create a, a group that does regular gatherings, if you want to um, start going to a certain religious group or something like that, these, these external, if you want to have a practice every day, setting those intentions during that type of lunar eclipse will help make that manifest. So it's external in the world, it's, it's social, but it's spiritual. It has a spiritual goal. That's the difference. One has a, the, the K2 has a spiritual goal. Rahu has a material goal. Now, then we have the new moon. And, and the new moon, that's the internal time. Less social, less people. More internal work. More unity consciousness. And so, when we have the, that eclipse caused by Rahu, it's, it's doing the inner work for an external purpose. So, if... Right now, one of the big issues on the planet is greed. So what can you do to work on removing your own greed so that you can be that which is representing what we want to create in the world? That is what we have happening in August. What do you need to do inside to make outside happen? Then we have the new moon solar eclipse with the south node, and that's the deep one. That's the one that'll take you so deep that you can, you can, people, People um, can, can get psychosis during that one because you go to such depths that if you identify with yourself as a woman who's been this and that and your job and it all falls away, you don't know who you are. So it's, it's a time period of really connecting to that deep core consciousness of who you really are. There's no external manifestation that's going to be fruitful during that time. So if you're going to do a, a job ritual during that time, you just waste it. You just waste it the, the most opportune time to have deep work done. So everybody feel the importance of these four types of eclipses, right? And we see the um, one in August, what the energy is. So as we come into August, and, and as we come into August, so there's going to be a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse. The solar eclipse is the big one. Uh, the lunar eclipse during that one, if, if the solar eclipse is going to be with Rahu, it means the lunar eclipse is going to be with K2. So it means to do social things for spiritual purposes, and then we have the solar eclipse coming, and it means internal things for what do we need to get rid of to, to make change in the world. And real fast again, Vishnu, Lakshmi, Shiva, Shakti, everybody got that connection there. So state of consciousness during a lunar eclipse or solar eclipse. And this one right here is particularly for solar because I'm going to focus a little bit more on solar uh, just time-wise and the fact that in August it's the solar eclipse that's going to be the, the big shifter happening. Uh, this is coming from Tantra Loka. It's a 9th century uh, tantric text um, by uh, the author is Abhinava Gupta. He's a Kashmiri Shavai. And in there, he says the sun is the measuring. The moon is what's measured, and the node, Rahu, is the measurer. And so what that means is, putting it more into our, our language, the sun is subjective experience. It's, it's what I'm experiencing. When, when I look at you, I experience you as a young woman, where someone else might look at you and say, oh, she's a, an older, you know, depending on their age, they'll see you very differently. So that subjective, what is it that I'm actually experiencing? That's the sun. Moon is objective reality. That's the, 
what, what actually is here. And the node, that's all the stuff that we have as individuals that makes it so that we don't see reality as it is. That's, that's what makes it so that um, uh, when, when people of prejudice suffer, there's a person not looking at who they are, but they're just taking the color and, and putting all these projections onto them. When somebody treats a woman as, as not as uh, equal to a man, that's, their, that's the Rahu, that's the North Node, that's their shadow putting some warped state of consciousness onto that person. So the Node is, is altering how we see reality. And, and I just use extreme examples, but we also have very um, subtle examples. For example, even your best friend, they might, uh, they might have done something, they might have forgotten something three years ago, and you're holding it against them, and so you always remind them twice because you're assuming they're going to forget. Even though, you know, they had a reason to forget, you're just assuming. And so you're giving them this little bit of grief every time you double remind them. That's, that's, that's still not looking at reality. That's not looking at them in the present moment. So, what happens in an eclipse? The sun, the moon, and the node are in alignment. And in that alignment, they dissolve in their separation. Meaning that there's emergence. What you're experiencing and what is are the same. That distortion of the node, it, it, it comes over, it eclipses the luminary, and then it disappears. And so you have a moment where you can either jump into complete delusion where nothing means anything, or you can take something and actually perceive it for its actual essence. So it's a very powerful moment in time. And it's something that in their, their meditators can spend years or decades trying to enter that state of consciousness naturally. Where during an eclipse, we have a little window in time where we all have access to what would take decades of meditation to achieve. So now a ritual at that time, one of the important things about ritual is you can sit there and say, oh, may money manifest, may money manifest come into my life. And, and you feel poor and you're like, oh, I need to pay my bills, I don't have enough money. Money manifest, money manifest. And you're feeling a complete lack happening inside. There's no money coming. If you're feeling lack, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter if it's the best, most expensive ritual. If you're not feeling it, if, if that distortion is there, the ritual doesn't have impact. It doesn't have effi uh, efficiency. So when we have this alignment and we can actually become the experience with the object, that means even the object of our mind we can merge with. So um, people that do Tibetan deity yoga, it's a time period where they can actually merge with the deity and have the effect that years of meditation bring. For somebody trying to manifest prosperity, if they line it up with the right eclipse, they can actually feel the prosperity merge with that which is the energy of prosperity. And prosperity um, rituals are done on the full moon, right? That full moon is, is the energy of Lakshmi. And so that prosperity is available there. Its energetic potency is completely available for you to tap in, merge with, and manifest. So, um, this is deep secret knowledge from the traditional Vedic tradition. If you try and find this written, you won't find it written anywhere. This is all stuff I learned from the 20 years I've spent going to India, working with various teachers, and I actually worked with uh, the gentleman who translated this text, Tantra Loka. All right. So potency of an eclipse. So right now, I'm, I think I've conveyed to you the potency, yes? Now, if you look at the Hindu and Buddhist traditions, what they'll tell you is, do your practice, it's 10 times more powerful. And some traditions will say, do your practice, it's 100 times more powerful. Some will even say 1,000 times more powerful, you know? Um, so what is it? 100 times, 10 times? They're generalizations. It's not 100, it's not 1,000. How much more potent it is depends on you. It also depends on the eclipse. There's, there's partial eclipses, there's total eclipses. What we have in August, it's a total eclipse. From the eclipse side, 
it's the most potent it can get for us as Americans. Now, for your side of potency, what you do during that eclipse, if you decide to do uh, a ritual to, to do some inner cleansing or to get rid of your greed or to create more clarity, if you just wrote it and you, you had to dig up the paper but just before the eclipse is happening, it, there's no potency there. If you're doing a regular ritual and you're making it an everyday ritual so that it's just there, it's deep, you're memorizing these practices, you're memorizing what you're doing and, and the, the ritual procedures, that makes it potent. Now, like I remember I compared Rahu to narcotics and K2 to um, uh, psychedelics. When these eclipse, eclipses happen, in the moment of that eclipse, you will feel like you're on a narcotic. This, this solar eclipse coming, it has that narcotic energy to it. You're going to be as if you're drunk or extremely stoned. The, the mind is not going to be clear. So if you think that you're going to just do a ritual after n not practicing it, not memorizing it, not working with it, and making it second nature to you, it's not going to happen. If you're going to do a practice that is like your practice, that's rooted, that's hard, that you have your heart into, and you could do half asleep, that's going to have potency. That's going to, you're going to hit the, the thousand times powerful. And uh, in, in the ritual traditions, of particularly Hinduism and Tantra, they say if you say a mantra so many thousand times, it gives certain results. So if, they, if you need to say it 10,000 times during this time period, if you have exact focus, and every time you say it is a thousand fold, you reach that 10,000 right there in that time period. So, very potent time to make rituals, to make intentions manifest. So, what to do during an eclipse? From Tantra Loka, I'm going to read what it says, and, and I think everybody has a, a handful of ideas going on in their head right now about what they're going to be doing in the next few eclipses, right? Um, because you, you have a deep, visceral understanding, which is, is my intention. Can we just read something from a scripture? You know, what's it? Who cares? If we understand why, then, then we have real potency there, and we can make it potent. And from the Vedic tradition, you're not supposed to do things just because. You're supposed to understand why. Um, Tantra Loka, it says... Uh, during an eclipse, it recommends sacred baths. Now, the sacred bath, just when, if you look at the time when the eclipse starts, they recommend taking a bath in a sacred place, sacred river. Here, we've all come to this body of water, taking that dip to begin before you do your ritual. If there's no water around, you take some water, pour it into your hands, and you say a blessing and sprinkle it on your head. And that's to begin that powerful space. Um, when the eclipse is done, you also do a ritual bath to cleanse yourself of whatever energy you cleared or created, whatever, you cleanse that energy of the shadow. You don't want that energy to stay with you. It was a potent time period, but it's good to leave it. It's kind of like, if you do a psychedelic, it's great for the time you're on it, but then you're ready to come back and be you again. So you do that ritual cleansing. Either take a, a dip or sprinkle some water on your, your head with a blessing and a purification. Um, it says meditations. It says fire rituals. And fire rituals, that's what they did. That was their form of ritual. So I'm not going to advise anybody to do fire ritual if you don't normally do fire ritual. Their normal ritual was fire ritual, so that's what they do when an eclipse happens. Uh, mantra recitation. Uh, and so uh, the key here is a regular spiritual practice with full intention. And uh, so, so I, I write down here, what are you focused on manifesting? When you're in an eclipse, be very conscious of your thoughts. Because those thoughts, even if you're not doing a ritual, they're impacting your life. Now, if you're thinking about, I haven't paid the bills, and that's getting amplified a thousand times, you're going to suffer the next few, the, the next few months is going to set up financial problems, and that fin those financial problems in those few months, that can ripple over years till you get out of that. Where if you think prosperity stuff, you could get a whole new job in the next few months that all of a sudden just uplifts the next few years of your lives. So the things that we do on an eclipse, they don't just impact us at that moment, they have a ripple of impact. Because they have big impacts and those big impacts continue to ripple. Um, 
Watch your mind, keep it focused. Uh, watch your breath. Do your spiritual practices. Um, everything you do at that time has a long-lasting impact. Avoid drugs that lessen clarity. If there's something that makes you, un like, like particularly alcohol, it's probably one of the worst things you could do during an eclipse. And everybody has different relationships to drugs. Some people use drugs to pray. Um, the key, and, and, in, and in the scriptures, some people, uh, they take the Hindu and Buddhist scriptures and they say, oh, the scripture says no drugs. And it actually doesn't say no drugs. It says no tamas inducing substances. And so tamas means darkness, cloudiness, unclarity. And so we don't put substances in us that bring a lack of clarity. If, if what your mind is, is on your mind is amplified, do you really want a lack of clarity amplified? <laughs> and then another thing, avoid energy that you don't want to be, that you don't want branded into you. So like, what an awesome group we have in this little circle right here. And there's, you know, there's the big, there's multiple big eclipse gatherings happening this summer. Don't be with people that don't have vibes that you want. Really, your goal is to be with people that you want to become like. Be with people that you want to evolve to. Be with people that are on the same path that you're evolving with. Because you're opening up. And in that openness space, you're feeling their thoughts. They're feeling your thoughts, and you're amplifying each other. So you really want intentional people. You want to be with intentional people. So am I saying stay home? Don't, don't be out. Don't... No. You want to be with good people. You want to be with well-intentioned people. You want to have a focused mind. So now, just watching my time. Um, so this is this is where the name of, of the lecture gets its uh, the the lecture gets its name from. Being on the right side of an eclipse. So what happens when we're coming into an eclipse? Energies start to get intense. Energy starts to get heightened. Things start to get very frictioned, very... The intensity rises. For a solar eclipse, it's 10 days before. For a lunar eclipse, it's three days before. Don't start something new. Don't start a new business. Don't open a bank account. Still go to work, do your normal life stuff, but don't start anything that you're going to be stuck with. Because it's not going to have good longevity and it's going to cause problems. If you plant a garden at, in, in this zone, 10 days before a solar eclipse, 3 days before a lunar, it's going to either get cut down, raided, destroyed, it will not be successful. Bugs will eat it, it will not do well. And so think about other things in your life starting at that time. You don't want it. One thing that people do during that time, relationships get really intense. Business partners, rela love relationships, people start arguing. In my practice as an astrologer, I get so many phone calls in this window of people saying, I'm leaving my husband, I'm good, you know, and I say, I say, hey, call me on Wednesday and if you still want to leave your husband, then we'll talk. Right now, just go take a vacation, go just, just you know, go down to Santa Cruz and go surfing or whatever. Don't don't break up with a partner during this time. Like, really get a, get a, be unattached. If things are going wrong, say, hey, they got an eclipse in their head. It's it's and, and forgive me if, if anybody wants to call me. Um, but you know, like uh, if somebody who has very difficult menstruation, if they start getting very intense and moody. You don't act like they're, that's them and they actually mean everything they say. You say, oh, I have compassion, this is an intense time period, and you wait till that time period's over and you say, hey, I love you. <laughs> During this time period, be careful of saying the things that you, or you can't, that you can't, um, that you can't take back. Because at this time, you're going to be like, oh, they're so terrible, I'm going to tell them all those bad things I did behind their back, and I'm going to this and that, and, and you'll just destroy everything. It'll be ruined. It, it, it'll never come together again. Walk away from friction during that time period. Business partners, same thing. Walk away from friction. If they start throwing strange ideas at you, say, hey, let's have a meeting next Thursday. 
just just look when that eclipse happens and, and, and make it make the meeting afterwards. What do you do before an eclipse? What important things? Nothing. Nothing, nothing important. Okay. Um, after an eclipse, after an eclipse, it's like this. It's like almost like if you've been walking up a hill and you're about to come down. That eclipse point. That's it's a, you're over the hump. That moment right over the hill is almost like a you you got momentum to move forward. It's really powerful though that moment just after the eclipse. And uh, I'm gonna go probably more into the uh, August eclipse um, in tomorrow at 11:15. But just to throw the the most important thing for that August eclipse. Once that eclipse happens, take two weeks off. Go do some activist work. Go do something that's going to change the world. Make things happen. If there's going to be a rally, if there's going to be something to try and shut something down, make it happen just after that eclipse. The eclipse hides your getting ready. All the things you need to do to get ready to, you know, um, if, if we were a king wanting to attack another country, they wouldn't see our army moving up on their line, and then after the eclipse, bam, we'd surprise them. So. As activists, what does that mean? What can we do in that, that time? Um, a, a, a very recent example of, of something of this nature happening, uh, Facebook released their stock three days before an eclipse. And their, their stock went up, it was skyrocketing, people were buying it for huge amounts. It was completely inflated. People were like, should we buy it? And they said, oh, buy it quick, it's gonna go even higher. As soon as the eclipse happened, it, it dropped to almost half. People lost thousands and thousands, if not millions of dollars by that drop. So that's what that happened by them releasing it before the eclipse. If they had just waited till after the eclipse, it would have had a nice, good, strong rise. Nobody would have been unhappy. Um, let's see. Uh, avoid before an eclipse anything to do with uh, dishonesty and infidelity. As I said, I'm a professional astrologer and I can't tell you, if you do the wrong thing in that time period before an eclipse, you'll ruin, you'll, it, it'll, it'll brand you. Everybody in town will know, Every, it's, 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 be, be aware of that time period, be very conscious during that time period. All right. Now birth, somebody, it, it's actually opposite. Somebody born just before an eclipse, makes them very rich and prosperous. Somebody born after an eclipse, they have a lot of difficulty in life. Um, our, our dear president uh, was born hours before an eclipse. And whatever we think of him, he just, I mean, look at in the primaries, he just eclipsed everybody. You know, there's all these guys, and some of them were saying intelligent things, and they all got eclipsed because of his energy. So that's being born before an eclipse. But for us, our actions before an eclipse, they get eclipsed and they eclipse us. So we don't want to be the eclipsed one. We want to be the eclipser. Um, all right. So in a second, I'm going to open up. It open up to. I'm going to open it up to questions for a few minutes, and then I'm going to do a quick show of what I'm going to do tomorrow, so that you guys can see if you want to come back for more. This will be uh, 15 minutes of kind of repeat of the importance of an eclipse and what to do during it, and then I'm going to show what this one, the impact it's having on America. So, questions? Yes? Um, that will be here? That will be, um, it's somewhere in the zone. Okay. So and and people zone. are jumping up, so let me show you the slides real fast, and then I'll take the questions. So this is the eclipse. This is, uh, I show how the eclipses move. Through the, through the country and the different things that have been happening when each of these eclipses are, are burning through the country. This is 1834. You can see the eclipse was very similar. 1865, right around the time of the Civil War, we saw that same eclipse. And then you can see the eclipse coming in August. And so we see the, the, the two eclipses in our time frame that existed similar and, and what's there. And I'm just like I taught you from an, a deeper understanding of, I'm not just telling you what it means, I'm telling you how, I'm, how I interpret, that we're gonna get how I interpret what this eclipse is gonna mean and its impact. All right, so now I'm ready for questions. <laughs> Since people were running away. <laughs> yes. So, 
during the eclipse, what's the what's the impact on pregnant pregnant women? You know, I have a friend who is pregnant and she was a bit worried about the eclipse happening. So, um, in in some uh, like Indian and Asian cultures, they they worry about the energy of the eclipse on the baby. Just goes by the same rules I said right now. The intentions are tenfold. If mother's worrying, or a thousandfold, if mother has excessive worry, that worry is a thousandfold and just totally crippling the baby. If mother is sending love and nourishment and, you know, whatever good energy she works with to the baby, it's a thousandfold. So, same, same. So they say stay in, avoid, avoid going out. They mean avoid going out to the market where you might get thoughts of who knows what. So it's always, it's about watching the mind. Okay. Uh, you said don't start anything. Does that like include things like traveling, road trips and things like that? I wouldn't start in a, you know, that's the big thing with the, the, the uh, gatherings that are all happening. Because everybody's going to be leaving in that 10 day window to get to that gathering <laughs> because of that. And this is one of the, the Indian tricks. So you got to leave 10 days before. So 11 days before, take a trip to your best friend's house, then take a trip to a friend's on the way, then take... So you left. You started your trip longer. It's not when you get there, it's when you begin your journey that matters. That's one way to avoid it. Otherwise, you are riding in that eclipse, and there will, you'll see it at that event, there will be some things related to that energy happening. So you're saying if you leave, if you're if you're on a road trip and you leave eleven days before, you 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 jump the window. But you're still traveling with it. Doesn't matter. Your your journey started. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, it's don't begin. You're allowed to continue stuff. It's it's when when you begin, like a, a human birth chart. That's the moment they began. It's the moment they were born, and that shows so much about you. So it's the moment we begin something. It gives the, the stamps it with the stars. Yes. Yeah. Um. I'm on the uh, the temple coup for Burning Man. Uh huh. And the first people are gonna get out there on the ninth of August. Uh huh. And then different people come in different ways. Do you, so, do you have any suggestions yeah, for so, those? That and, and I'm gonna repeat it so it gets reported because that's a good question too. Um. So if there's multiple people coming to an event and some are getting there before and some are not getting there before that window. Uh, it's not the event itself, it's building the temple. Building the temple. Here. So, um, when you build something new, it's always good to do this like opening ritual. And if you look in both Indian, Asian cultures, and even ancient European cultures, um, they talk about laying the foundation stone, and they always would do a ritual around that foundation stone. That's the birth time of a building, is that foundation stone. So, if they get there, they make sure it's a good... Um, astrological time for that foundation stone, they're out of the window, then there's no problem. They, they're, they're, they're freeing themselves from that energy. Yeah. Well, what I'm more uh, yeah. curious about is what suggestions you have so that like the leaders, leadership of the project, Yes. how they can take this awareness of the energy mm -hmm. and use that to navigate because different people come at different times and you have to orient them to what's going on but with the eclipse energy and everything. And it's going to be getting intense and tense and tense and yeah. people are going to be fighting and arguing and, and a little bit of backstabbing this oh. eclipse is going to be happening. Okay. Yeah, because it's in Leo. So there's a whole power dynamic issue coming up. So creating a better power for this eclipse, creating a, a power structure and who to go to and who oversees who and making that really clear is going to be important for, for this for for navigating um, in this eclipse. Maybe you should let your crew know about it. Start, right? <laughs> Maybe let your crew know what's going on. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, in terms of doing the ritual, does it matter if you're in, in alignment and full visibility? Uh, remember we talked about potency? The difference between 10, 100, 1,000? And, and that there's an external component and an internal component? So all those factors come in. The more, the more direct you are to it, the more potency you're getting from the outside. But if you don't have the internal potency, it doesn't mean you can utilize it. And so it might actually, if you don't have the internal potency, you might be better off not being in that direct alignment. If you're, you're suffering depression, you might 
want to avoid being in that direct line. If you're ready to do your ritual, the closer you're to that line, the more powerful it's going to be. Yeah. Yes. Are uh, your slides or the recording of this talk or any other talk available online or any other way, resources, if you uh, want to? It, it, it was videoed and, and I'll be YouTubing it. Okay, awesome. And my name is Freedom Cole. Freedom Cole. Cole. Yes, C O L A. Gotcha, thank you. So, and, and, and there you can even see my 2012 predictions too. Oh, Everybody's saying the world's going to end. <laughs> um, Oh, uh, maybe we'll have time to talk about that tomorrow. Those are particular breathing exercises to do during the clips. Yeah. And, and tomorrow there'll be a little bit more time. I'm subconsciously putting that into your life. <laughs> 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 Eleven fifteen, somewhere in the zone here. Not this structure, but it's it's around. Yeah. Any other questions? I, I yes. just want to make clear. So, if you have a personal practice that's really strong in it, and you're the one that can then that's going to be more common. But if you don't have a personal practice, then maybe you don't need an alignment. Personal practice. I'm um, just so. Uh, I'll just the strength and the potency. If you want to, if you need to, you know. And, and as we saw, there's different types of eclipses. And which one is the energy you need to be working on in your life? And remember, these happen every six months. So, in, so right now, coming into August, we'll have a solar eclipse with Rahu and a lunar eclipse with K2. Six months from that, it'll be a solar eclipse with K2 and a lunar eclipse with Rahu. Six months from that, it, it just keeps switching back and forth every six months. And, and so you can tap into that potency, even if it's showing up in China or Brazil. You can still, you won't have that thousandfold, but you're still going to have that umpteen powerful energy to support your practice, ritual, or intentions. Yes. Yes. So it is global. Sometimes I feel a different energy coming from my friends in Europe versus the energy I feel generally in the U.S. Yes. That's tomorrow's on. lecture. <laughs> Sorry. I got lots of slides on that to really show literally where it can be seen and how it brings that all together. Yeah. I'm going to, 45 minutes, I'll talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. With examples. I like things visceral. I think everybody has a visceral sense of an eclipse now, right? Um, yeah. Thank right. you, Freedom. Thank you, everybody. You're a good audience. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>